<laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We love our new place. Yeah, it's good to be here. We're gearing up for another trip into the mountains now. So this weekend we really get to experience what it's like being in Colorado. Into day two. Yeah. So day one we did Chicago to Montezuma, Iowa, which was 250 miles in total. Slept for six hours. Yeah, so that was two stops for Alex, one fuel stop for me. And day two was a long day. All day and basically all night. Well, for me, it spilled into the next day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, he had a little hiccup. Yeah. But we after stop eight. We overcome after stop seven. <laughs> and we persevere. <laughs> you gotta listen to part two first. Let's hit the road. Back on the road after our camping stop, which was not ideal. The charging there seemed a little bit. I think our power station had some faulty wiring or something because the not even the one the 120 outlet would work. And I didn't try the 30 amp, but the 50 amp, I'm, you know, looks like the breaker had an issue or something in the night. It wasn't actually tripped, but it wasn't charging, so you know, it's kind of a, a mystery there. But uh, got us up to yeah, 56 percent. This was just in the morning when I figured it out while we were packing everything up for an hour of charged again, but should be just enough to get us to our next stop. We've got 70 miles over here and uh, indicated and 77 to go until our next Electrify America station. First stop of the day. Plenty, plenty. Look at that, 13 miles. That puts that in percent. 11 percent. It's kind of too much. I gotta be using more of the battery. Oh my oh, goodness. Big field over here. 117 miles till the next stop. Yeah. I'm not getting gas because I still have over three quarters of a tank. Should I? Um... So you're going to what now? I'm ready to go. Ooh, we gotta investigate that murder scene. Yeah. Mine's so bad I can barely even see out of my windshield. Betty's still hanging on. Close to 30 bucks per stop. And we've got so you've spent more than me so far. Yeah, did you see how cheap the gas is here? All right, I'm being a little bit more aggressive now. I, I probably could be more aggressive with the uh, cutting it off. You know, the charger at 70%, it slows down from 100 kilowatts down to like 60, 65 maybe. So whatever I can do to avoid charging in that zone is... Uh, going to help the overall duration of this trip but you know if I could go you know I was able to pretty much have a buffer of 14 miles consistently in the last few tries so right now and that was starting off with a deficit so I have a deficit of uh, yeah actually pretty aggressive so looks like 24 mile deficit but um, my deficits before have been much more than 10 so I'm willing to say still by the end of this next leg, that's gonna be a buffer. And it might be a small one, but I have like, I've had over 10% every time I get back and the buffer just seems to grow towards the bottom of the battery pack. So I'm gonna trust in that. The only thing that's working against me now is uh, it's hot out. It's 81 degrees and it's, uh, the charging speeds are slow. This truck is capable of operating electric brakes, um, but that little U-Haul trailer doesn't have them as so many do, the, you know, the electric brakes are cool and they're they're getting more common, but um, yeah, these kinds of basic trailers, they just don't have them. And um, what it means is all the brake power on that trailer comes from the force within the tongue that actuates the hydraulic piston and applies the brakes. And the only way you get that force is if the vehicle towing this truck right here is slowing down and what that means right and look at that 1.42 miles per kilowatt hour that's just beautiful right i did a test i set the cruise control just like you see it now and we've come over the crest of a hill and what you'll start to see this little indicator on the side which is probably one of my favorite instruments that you get in the rivian is the power meter and it's down in the green which you think, okay, cool. The truck's regenerating electricity, you know, putting power back into the battery. And I agree, that is cool under normal circumstances, but right now, that means 
ever so slightly, I am applying the brakes on the trailer behind me, which is killing my mileage, right? Anytime I'm using those friction brakes, um, yeah, that's just mileage loss, that's energy lost. Um, it's not productive usage of that power in the battery pack. Um, and the only way to circumvent that is unfortunately turning off the cruise control. So right now going up this hill, um, it's another good example. And here in the beautiful plains of Iowa, yeah, we've got some windmills, cornfields. This is a great proving ground. When I was sitting here on the cruise control just flat, I was down to like 1.12 miles per kilowatt hour. And uh, it was almost to the point, I'm like, what's going on? Something's gotta be, something's gotta be wrong. Either the, the compressor's running, the battery's overheating or something, or uh, I don't know what. But what we do is gotta take the cruise control off. And I put my foot on the pedal and just get it so we've got a little bit of blue there. So we're still applying power. You know, what happens is we rubber band a little bit. Um, maybe we get a little more aerodynamic drag, but that's nothing com compared to what that friction brake effect is gonna have. Started at a 24 mile deficit, down to an eight mile deficit, but I'm pretty confident with that. Um, I know from the past couple recharges that a 70% charge can pretty comfortably take me 100 miles. Um, so I'm down to 30% and I've only got 44 miles to go. I think that's gonna work out. Finally, 22 and 22. It took until 20%. Oh, gotta turn my cruise control off. Modulate the throttle. Yeah, 20% until the range estimate and my actual distance left on this uh, on this leg match, which is it's alarming. I mean, you gotta spend 50%. I was up at 70, over 70 actually. So, you know, the vast majority of the usable power in there I have to spend sitting here looking at an indicator telling me I'm not gonna make it um, and just believing in the technology on my own and luckily we know what we're doing so let's wait now we're gonna find some damage charger or something and be stuck on a on a solar panel 240 system like we were up in Michigan but or Wisconsin yeah Newburgh that was a good time go check that one out now we got actually a four mile buffer, 7%. And uh, yeah, I'm already thinking, was I not aggressive enough? That's pretty safe, I think. We'll be around 5%. Here we go, rolling in. I got 5% left. A little bit of lunch in Omaha. Are we in Omaha yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we set up the chairs. We're just at a Walmart and a whiny boy. It's very hot out. You have mayonnaise on your lip. On the right. Oh yeah. About to put more on. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're at the second fuel stop and I keep hitting the wrong freaking gas because they have two 87s. I'm just trying to get the cheapest stuff. Kaylee's got all her luggage out. I'm taking my probiotics. <laughs> Popping pills back there. All right, second fuel stop. Alex is on his fourth charge. I don't even really need gas right now. I'm just getting it because we're doing 150 miles and I didn't want to stop again because we stopped anyways with him to get lunch so here we are in Omaha Nebraska uh, Alex doesn't think we're gonna get to Colorado until 11 p.m. to our apartment I think that's a lie we are gonna get there before then we might have to leave him in the dust though so second fuel stop was $51.15. So I've spent $110 so far on gas. Now I have a full tank. There's nothing really interesting to tell you guys about my 
fuel efficiency, it's been between 17 and 18 miles per gallon the entire way. I've been going between 56 and 58 miles per hour. If I go over that, I'm literally fish tailing everywhere. And if I'm going under that, people are beeping at me. So I've been going 56 to 58 the entire time. Honestly, I'm happy with that fuel efficiency. Like I thought it was gonna be way worse. When I trailered from New York to Chicago, I was literally getting like 11 miles per gallon. So I'm happy with it. All right, this is the halfway point, I think. Yeah, Omaha, right? From Chicago all the way. We've done four stops, yeah. So we got four left. We have 148 mile leg to do. We did 150 miles on the very first leg, starting at 100%. And we've got just ticked over to 92. We had about 14% left though after that first leg. So I think this is going to be enough. It's only saying I got a 110 mile range, but as we know, that will basically have a different trajectory than the miles we're knocking down are. So we're going to give it a shot. I am pulling into the Comfort Inn for the next charging stop. They're just over to the right. Yep, there they are. Quality in. Nice. And I have three miles estimated range left. We are at 2% battery. Um, yeah, that is about as close as you probably want to cut it on a road trip. But, Holly, you don't get range anxiety, do you? No. He just wants to go play ball. But, all right, well, I guess just leave then. I'll, I'll give you a buzz as soon as I'm done charging you, okay? Okay. I'm gonna run the dog now. Okay, bye. All right. I'm speechless. <laughs> Completely speechless. Alex sent us the next charging stop in Google Map and we opened it in Google Map, copied the address and put it into Apple Map and it brought us 25 minutes away in the middle of Nebraska. Literally cornfields, nothing here. Yeah. Literally nothing is here. So now we're delayed 45 minutes. Delayed on top of already being delayed. Yeah. We turned down where that road was closed and I was like, go straight? Yeah. And then it got even sketchier because then it was literally just corn. Red and I was like, there's no Electrify America over no. here. There's no There way. was nothing. There wasn't even a gas station. No. But I have a little over half a tank left, so it's not like we even need to get gas right now. We'll okay. just stop and go to the bathroom. So are we going back where we came? There. It's not the same way. But it's not I'm, the same road. I'm just going to plug in. Denver <laughs> and we'll just GPS there and then Alex can call us yeah and we'll figure it out so here we go we're gonna try to get back on the throughway that was brutal there's only one station here that works this one in the middle was gonna give me 15 kilowatts which is useless so that one also wasn't working I submitted a uh, ticket that it's not working talk to support about it for a while this one actually worked for a minute or two and then uh, had an error of some kind I didn't even bother to report that but this one ultimately was the champion although when I got here I tried that one first and while I was trying that one and failing somebody snuck in and got this one so I basically had to wait for them to finish before I could plug in but it works fine after that and uh, our next jump is only 76 miles and uh yeah we're just gonna send it the reviews on the next place look pretty good i trust it this place is uh yeah not great but he got to play ball and he's all tired now yes good boy and then to make it work we had to flex on him a little bit yeah climb up there the articulation is just unmatched Climbs right up there. Trailer, all that stuff, no worries. So, we'll go over here. Stop. And unplug it. Oh, we gotta go. 
Somehow we caught up to Betty. We don't really know what's going on here in Nebraska. But Alex is stopping here, so we're just gonna fill up. We're gonna fill and chill. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna fill and chill. Oh, I might hit this. How that happened that we ended up at the same place again, just four minutes apart. All right, so 59.41 and we're full again. We're gonna get dinner at the next one. So we are legit just sitting here waiting for Alex to charge because it took us three minutes to get gas. He's honestly being such a Karen right now talking to Electrify America customer support because his account time. is not working. Just the second time. <laughs> he had to tap to pay and he's pissed about it. You know I'm gonna call. Get You're only pulling 100 kilowatts. To, to get my $1.75 refund. <laughs> because they should be charging me 31 cents. No, sorry, 24 cents per minute instead of 32. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. That's gonna that's, get that's really that's pricey. way too pricey, I can't. Oh, stop number six. And we're almost done, 61%. We're going to 70. We've got 110 miles to drive and Charger's working fine. This Electrify America stuff is uh, just frustrating because here the chargers seem perfectly functional in charging the car, but then the communication to their server and the app is, is not great. So I spoke to them for the second time today and they said, well, you know, you can just take a picture and uh, call us back and we'll refund you the difference for if it would have been a uh, um, you know a member charge and they give you the different rate and just refund you the difference on your car, which is very nice of them. You know that's perfectly accommodating. So one thing I will say, I've I've had to call them three times total now. Uh, the first time was down in Nashville, and uh, the second time was earlier today, and this is the third time. And I mean, say what you will, every time I've called, I've actually, it takes, you know, five or 10 minutes on hold, but I end up talking to a person and they're helpful. They, they do what they can. The lady in Nashville, she was on team viewer in the units, rebooting them, booting them up. I mean, I was working with her and she was sending me from one to the other, trying here and trying there. And eventually we got it to work. Working to McDonald's order whenever you're ready. Hi, can I please have two large Diet Cokes? Two large Diet Cokes? And a small fry with buffalo sauce. Small fry with buffalo sauce? That's all. Here we go, here we go, here we go again. First time. What's my weakness? Trailers. First time we went in the drive thru with the U Haul. Oh wow, I'm real close to that. It's okay, we'll just have to really reach. Hello. Oh, yum. Best Diet Coke. Thank you. Oh, the fries are piping. Oh. All right. Are we gonna hit it? 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 Vic. Okay, we're never doing that again. But the fries are piping hot. Mmm, that buffalo smells <laughs> so good. Woo, they're burning my hands. <laughs> Quick, they're burning me. Mmm, <laughs> we should've got a large. <laughs> There's a McDonald's in the next stop. Well, we'll meet you guys at our next stop, mm -hmm. Wendy's. <laughs> 110 miles to go. Um, that I have successfully done before with 70%, and uh, we'll just go off of that as affirmative. Check out us. What kind of Barbecue. sauce? With spicy nuggets? Yeah. Red flag. <laughs> Oof. Made it here. Two percent. Three miles left. I guess uh, what I said about, you know, not uh, being too risky. Well, so much for that. But uh, we made it. Not too bad. A good time. It's that altitude, you know. I think it's a thousand feet from our last stop to here, and then another thousand to go um, up into Colorado. So. Makes a difference for sure. This is the only charger that works. This is it. And all the others are broken. So he was sitting here charging. He was cool. He's like, hey man, I just need a few more minutes. 
and uh, then I'll be good to go. He's like, oh, my GPS says I need 64%, but uh, I'll, I'm going to stop it at 55. I think I can milk it. So that was cool of him for sure. But this is probably the worst one. I asked him about the next one. That's where he's coming from. And he said, uh, all of them but one do work instead of here where all of them but one don't work. We got to go long, long, long charge. We got a long drive to do, 130 miles, I think, going up a thousand feet, so. You gotta go potty? Yes, I do. Got that Wendy's, baby. Us U-Hauls, we gotta stick together, man. Yeah. The sky honestly is so pretty, though. And I got spicy nuggets with three sauces. That was clearly a hassle. Regular ranch, hot honey, so I wanna try it, and then the chili sauce. Apparently that's a crime. And then we got Alex food too because he's charging for the 97th time this trip. It's gonna be a long one. Wendy's chili. This is the best thing on the menu. Yeah. Hands down. It's good. You know when that article came out that there was like a finger found in the chili? Never deterred me. I always come. I've never heard that. I'm gonna pretend like I did it. Two hours and 49 minutes. Two hours and 49 minutes and how many miles? 202 miles. 202, we have 237 left on my car and we're not stopping because we want to get there. We're leaving Alex here. He has one more stop after this one, but he still has a half an hour to charge here. So we don't want to wait around and we're going and we're going to get there, right? Yep. We're fueled up with Wendy's. All right, I think uh, we're just about ready to go here. This is probably the single deepest charge I've ever done in one sitting at least. We've put in 116 kilowatt hours Coming in here at 2%, we're gonna leave at almost 90. And uh, for good reason, 132 miles indicated, and I've got 130 miles to go. But this is a thousand feet uphill. This is no alternates, you know, end of the night. Kind of the home stretch, there's just one more stop, a quick one to get me the rest of the way. And uh, I don't really want anything to go wrong. So it's out to be. I'm gonna let that tick over to 90 and we're gonna get out of here. There's a line, there's two people waiting now. So I've been blocking up this one charger for over an hour. Ooh, not good, not good. That was actually down at like 1.03 with this incline. Um, what I thought was a nice buffer is actually substantial deficit well, not quite sure what I'm gonna do about this there's a couple RV parks possibly that we'll find I don't know I keep looking at the map maybe it flattens out I don't know what the topography exactly looks like well I said there were no alternates but there actually is one we got an RV site and plugged into a 240 plug here seven kilowatts so i'm gonna give it an hour or so get a little extra battery power in here that hill is brutal for now we're just gonna put on some slow miles two of us made it <laughs> alex didn't so i've literally never even been to this town before Never seen the apartment, did a FaceTime tour, so. Wow, that's bright. Oh, it's cute. Yeah, it is. stopped charged up at the campsite put in 9.1 kilowatt hours 8.2 to the battery um, gave us like seven percent and took an hour and a half was absolutely miserable it's late 
and I'm ready to be done driving. But I'm glad I stopped. Maybe I didn't need to stop for so long, but uh, I think it was worthwhile. Keep that safety factor in there and uh, live to charge another day. That's the 350, it's alive. I'm gonna go get this thing plugged in and on. Oh, just about there, another uh, mile or two up the street and uh, that concludes this trip. Holy cow, I started this one uh, a little bit late. I was already at 20 miles or so, so. Thousand mile trip, 1.26 miles per kilowatt hour average used yeah that's it's definitely over 800 kilowatt hours is what i used which is that's a lot of juice going through that battery almost at the 10k mark wow what a ride it did it though we're here nice job truck oh Whew. we made it we're in our new apartment that was a long trip <laughs> <laughs> Longer than expected. Yeah, a little longer than expected. But actually, we didn't have any major, you know, issues, problems. Nothing really went wrong, so to speak. Just didn't go entirely right. We went from Montezuma, Iowa to Denver, Colorado. It was 741 miles. Mm -hmm. So the total trip was 991 from day one to day two. So we tallied up all of the, the charging stops. It ended up being eight stops of Electrify America stations fast mm -hmm. charging, which was uh, six less than I had planned. That's just because the I was pretty conservative trying to figure out, you know, how much drag there'd be on the trailer and whatever else. But it ended six up six less. Yeah, I thought it was going to be fourteen. Oh, when I put the God. whole thing on plug share, it was going to be fourteen stops. That was over. And actually, you know, the truck figured out whether it's based on the reviews or just based on. It wanting me to do longer stretches and mm -hmm. charge longer. Yeah. Um, it had the same idea as me, I guess. So it, it, you know, it told me eight stops, and the Rivian navigation system was correct on all mm -hmm. all of them. I ended up paying two hundred six dollars seventy eight cents, um, and that was for a total of seven hundred fifty kilowatt hours of juice from Electrify America, mm -hmm. and um, you paid a very similar amount in gas in the Indeed. Jeep, right? It only took Alex, we figured $20 to fuel up to 100% at the start of the trip. Um, for my full tank of gas in Chicago, it cost me, what, $75 yeah. to fill up the tank because gas in Chicago is a lot more expensive. Um, so with that and then my three stops on the trip, it cost me $211.53. Mm -hmm. So. By that, it was about four bucks cheaper to run the Rivian. At the same time, though, I sat and charged for over seven hours. Mm -hmm. um, and you actually got really lucky. Every stop that we went to, there was nobody at the chargers. And you didn't have an issue with the trailer. We didn't have to disconnect it at all. That was huge. Yeah. That was really huge. Towards the end, when it was getting late and we just wanted to get here, Kaylee and I were like, sorry, Alex, we're leaving you. I told him to go. <laughs> the only yeah. reason they wanted to stay with me is so they could pet Ollie occasionally. As soon as we crossed over into Colorado and we started doing the mile incline, I mean, my fuel efficiency went down. I was getting like 15 miles per gallon. And you actually and thought you were going to make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tank and I even said it in stop. one of the videos. Like when I, when I got my, when I charged up, <laughs> when I got my second tank of gas, I was like, oh yeah, I, I can make it. My, my car was saying I had plenty of miles to get there and then as soon as we hit that mile incline it was like no you're not gonna make it you need to stop so I got another quarter quarter tank I put $25 in at the end just to just to get home and I had to do a similar thing so it took quite a lot longer <laughs> and it was funny I was sitting there at the campsite you know with plenty of time to think about what I'm doing <laughs> and I was pulling up like a topographic map to try and see how much incline do I have left do I really need a lot more buffer can I just send it and see what happens mm -hmm. and I couldn't get anything conclusive we had no idea what we were driving into yeah. we didn't know that we knew that we were going uphill but you know we didn't realize how dramatic it would really be yeah. we were doing between 55 and 60 and yeah. you know I, I started off at 60 and by the end of the trip I was doing 80 with that trip well, <laughs> and it worked out patient, that but. he would go a little bit faster. He would get to the charger about 10 minutes before us, so then we didn't have to wait around as long, mm -hmm. and he wasn't, you know, 
backing us up. Yeah, that actually worked out okay. But, but it would have been about a, one, an hour and a half, two hours difference, just in the different speed we were traveling. So then there's the trailers, right? So you had the box trailer. Um, according to U-Haul, those things have like an empty weight of, um, what was it, like 16, 1,700 pounds. I think it was like 1,850. Yeah, and, and you can load them up with 2,500 pounds of stuff. So, which we did. Which we did, <laughs> yeah, for we sure. Definitely and that's did. the total. If of not the more than that. You could take 4,000 pounds, I think, on that trailer. I don't even think it's that much. Maybe it's not, but it was certainly at the limit. And then yeah. the truck was, you know, the Jeep itself was full of, full of heavy stuff. My Jeep, we put eight or ten boxes of all of our kitchen stuff in there so the jeep was weighed down without even the trailer so it was it was definitely at its capacity yeah. you had about four thousand eight hundred pounds maybe five thousand pounds yeah. total stuff trailer and in the cab mm -hmm. and uh that trailer the car transport trailer weighs 2200 pounds dry or mm -hmm. empty and the um the mercedes weighs 3200 pounds empty and, we, and we, we put all of the tools from the garage in there two giant toolboxes like that that was it was squatted really yeah. squatted for sure so so you were pulling a lot more weight than me yeah but i probably had can eight, tow a lot more than me obviously i probably had eight thousand pounds of of load yeah. between the trailer and the and the bed of the truck and how did it handle <laughs> it was great i never mentioned it because it never even occurred to me mm -hmm. you know I've done a fair amount of long distance traveling uh, or trailering. I've, I've hauled, um, you know, cars and, and boats and utility trailers and stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always been, you know, you can tell the truck is, is working hard and that review, man, it's just, <laughs> it's just, the suspension levels out and you just go. And it, mm -hmm. even on the hill going up into Denver, it was like, yeah, you can see in the gauge, you're using more power and mm -hmm. the efficiency goes down. But there's no limit. I, mean, I kind of wish at, at some point during the trip that we switched just so I could have yeah, experienced it. Yeah, you never got it. to ride in yeah. it. Yeah, we'll I didn't have, get to drive the trip. We'll have another all. opportunity for that. Yeah, I'm for sure. Very sure. But yeah, it handled really good. Mm -hmm. I was pleased. And I was sitting in my air-conditioned seat and listening to my HD audio with the... Uh, <laughs> and your podcast. Yeah, it was good. It was nice. <laughs> I did sit in the Jeep afterwards because I had to back the trailer up here to, the to unload it. And, and I the was, campsite. I squeezed in there because they had the seats all forward <laughs> to get all their boxes in behind. I'm like, oh my We God, had the net up behind us and the seats. spent 26 were... hours sitting like this. <laughs> yeah, it was crammed. Yeah. But we made it. It was actually a pretty fun trip. I had a lot of fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. 1.29 miles per kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. uh, which was substantially higher than I expected it to be. Yeah, you were and getting like 1.4 something going 60 and then 1.1 yeah. going on the 70. Flat, on the flat ground in Illinois, it was like, yeah, it yeah. was really, it was really frozen. nice. Um, and for me, I kind of, I thought that was pretty doable, mm -hmm. you know? It's not something I want to do all the time, but I do have to drive back to Chicago without a trailer this time. And but get the rest of our belongings. Yeah, trailer. I was impressed actually that the Jeep got such good fuel. Oh, mileage. me too, because I was cruising around. We went like downtown Denver the other day and I was stuck in traffic and I was literally getting like 13 miles to the gallon mm -hmm. and then pulling all that weight on the highway, obviously not like accelerating, braking all the time, but I was getting, yeah, 17, 18 miles to the gallon. And we've done road trips in that truck with uh, without a trailer, just going to New York or whatever. And, and yeah. it's like 19, maybe 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was a long day. That was, uh, you know, it's one thing to be driving, you know, late at night and at the end of your, your energy level Mm -hmm. Not, not just figuratively, but in the vehicle itself. It's another thing to be sitting in a parking lot and just waiting for that thing to juice back up. That was brutal. Ollie and I are sitting there in that parking lot, and we did like one lap around. And he's just looking at me. I'm looking at him. Like, <laughs> what are we gonna do, brother? This is all we got, dude. <laughs> what we're really excited next is uh, the Rivian Chargers. Go ahead, a Rivian Charger. Mm -hmm. There's one in Colorado Springs we want to go to. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to make a video going to that. Yeah, we've got some fun trips planned now mm -hmm. that we're in basically Rivian territory as far as I'm concerned. We're very excited to be here. Yes, we are. And so is Ozzy. I'm very tired. Oh my goodness. Little black blob. Best laid plans. Best laid plans. Mm -hmm.